Spoon here for night four of the L'Oreal Modern Fashion Festival and tonight is going to be a busy one. Tonight, first up is Runway 3, presented by Madison. Standouts for me, I think, are going to be Yojin Bay, Arthur Gallen and Camilla and Mark. It was beautiful. The block colours I think were so strong on the runway. The peacock blue by Bianca was just show stopping. I think um, Camilla and Mark were right on the money tonight with the whole military kind of turned aviator trend. Um, that was really strong. Arthur Gallen actually stood out. I saw his collection online and I see it here uh, and I was blown away. I like the military look anyway, so I was very impressed. Very impressed. I'm here with Arthur Gallen. Arthur Gallen, how was tonight's show for you? Oh, tonight's show was fantastic. It was so slick and a beautiful um, group of designers. And the execution of the show was just immaculate. It was all about the clothes. It was very chic and it was so fun to be part of. So the collection is called Le Marais and I'm a big fan of all things Parisian, having a French husband. So it's very sort of Parisian influence, beautiful tailoring, um, sophisticated dresses, lots of French navy, but a bit of Lou Dillon rock and roll in there. So that was kind of the fusion that I was after. About to go into runway four, presented by In Style magazine, and I'm really, really looking forward to Ginger and Smart and Nicola Finetti, who's the master, master of the evening wear. I'm here with Laura Anderson, chairman of L'Oreal Melbourne Fashion Festival. Laura, what did you think of tonight's show? Oh, I thought it was just wonderful. I loved the props and the staging, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I'm here with makeup artist extraordinaire Nigel Stanislas. Nigel, what are you looking forward to seeing tonight in runway four? Oh, for runway four tonight. Oh my god. Um, where do I start? Nicola Fanetti and Fernando Frassoni. Definitely. Very excited. I really liked Megan Park's work as well. I thought it was, um, had an ease to it and I, I, I'm not an embellishment person, but I really enjoy her embellishment. I'm here with Joe Farage. Joe, that amazing, amazing opening. Can you tell us a little bit about any inspiration for that one amazing clip, which I want immediately? Well, generally, the, the, the inspiration was generally about traditional fabrics and the heritage of tailoring, but really modernising it to express the modern gentleman. Well, Lara, what is it about a menswear show that is so different to a women's, watching a women's wear show? Um, I think, you know, it's all about the kind of coolness of the men. Um, I love always seeing men's shows. The hot men, I mean, I'm a really big fan of suits. I recently went to the GQ Awards and wore a, um, a men's suit, so I'm a massive fan of that. I'm here with GQ editor Nick Smith. Nick, what do you think of tonight's show? I, I was actually really surprised. I don't know if you saw me in my seat, but I was rocking out. It was, I mean, I was sitting next to Grant, so I couldn't help that. But the quality of the labels now in Australia, in menswear, is phenomenal. I'm here with Paris Wells. Paris, what did you think of tonight's menswear show? Philip, it was very good. It was very good. Could, there's only one label with a few colours. The rest was a bit dark. I thought it was fantastic, a really uh, uh, sporty looking production and uh, it made the festival look even better. Is there a standout piece in the collection that for you is the quintessential autonomy piece? Ooh. I'd say it's a new quintessential piece and that would be our uh, navy velvet jacket. That's, that is to me the piece to resist also.